Yes, Hickok 45, coming to you from the beautiful hills of Tennessee. Yes, Tennessee, the home of Chet Atkins, Wayne Millsap, Dolly Parton, all sorts of wonderful singers, Johnny Cash and everybody else lived here. So glad you're here now. Sing if you like, yeah, feel free to sing. Like I say, as long as you're sprayed for ticks, you're good. I think I put too much stuff on me to keep the ticks off today. <laughs> I got it in my eyes. and getting the sniffles from it. I don't keep my hands away from my legs and everywhere where I put that stuff. And of course I smear it on my hands and on my neck and everything. So I don't have to think about them. Yeah, really, I don't very much. Uh, so glad you're here. Uh, it's looking pretty green still and it should stay green, right? Should look kind of like this until when? Yeah, as autumn begins to creep up on us, things begin to die. At least the leaves begin to die. The trees really don't die, do they? Otherwise, they would be dead and never come back. Okay? So they, let's say they go dormant, right? And the leaves die. So anyway, glad you're here. And uh, big week. Uh, I've got a lot going on later this week, but it is the week. I'm here the week you're seeing me, believe it or not. And uh, before I forget, let me remind you of the NRA. Hope to see you this week at the NRA. Later this week on Friday or Saturday, okay? And that would be at the uh, uh, Silent Central booth on Friday uh, from 2 to 3. And then Saturday, SDI booth, Sonoran Desert Institute booth from uh, 3 to 4 in the afternoon, okay? so. A chance to, to uh, <laughs> nail us down, okay? And then I'll probably see you walking around there, perhaps, okay? Uh, it's a great chance to, uh, it's the biggest gun show, you know, really. And kind of people, I guess the shot show is technically a little bit bigger, but that's a different sort of thing. Everybody can't go to that. It's a little different, more for industry and that sort of thing. The NRA is you know, the, the vendors, all the gun manufacturers and accessory manufacturers are there to meet you and me, people that just shoot, you know, and buy guns uh, on the retail side, you know, as much as anything. So anyway, it's a, it's a big gun show. Hope to see you there. And uh, yeah, what else, man? I don't know. Pretty, and you all coming around because, uh, you know, I'm just filled with uh, stupidity and and dumbness, you know, to share, and uh, always willing to share. This is 125, isn't it? Shoot, uh, Sunday shoot around number 125. It's hard to believe that many times. Well, it shouldn't be. We've got more, I don't know, somewhere between 2,000, 3,000 videos. I don't know where that is. I, I forget where to find that information. You want to go to the, our own channel, because uh, it doesn't show up like it used to, uh, but I know it's there. But it's around 2,500, I think. So I shouldn't be too surprised, but yeah, uh, the numbers creep up 125 times, you know, 125 weeks. <gasps> That's a long time. That's almost two years, isn't it? Yeah. So anyway, here we are, and I hope you had a good week. Hope to see you in Houston, and uh, hope you saw the uh, Model 13 video this week. And guess what? I just, it, it's been a whatever a few weeks since we did that video and I hadn't shot it and I brought it out today. I saw take a few shots with this baby. Uh, yeah, nice, nice revolver. And then also I have the Daniel Defense, the uh, DDM4 V7 and shot it in a good while. You know, and it occurred to me as I was uh, kind of setting a table up here, these are two of the winners from the last video, the last AR-15 I would ever sell, the last 357 Magnum I'd ever sell. Whoa, we got two winners on the table, don't we? Yeah, so uh, 
I guess that's why I, I saw them or thought I'd like to shoot them, I'd like to fire them off because they must be favorites. They must, yeah, they are. They must be special to me in some way, and and they are. You know the. I mean, this is such a cool, and, and there's so many made like it. You know, it's not just because it's Daniel Defense. There are a lot of uh, nice AR-15s now that, uh, you know, slim and trim and, uh, you know, lightweight and uh, made uh, very, very well and just not that heavy. Just uh, really, really nice rifles. And, uh, they, you know, I have two or three that, you know, fall into this category. and. Boy, it's just so handy, handy. You know, almost as handy as an AK-47. <laughs> well, that's kind of the difference. They're a different animal, aren't they? A little heavier and uh, maybe a little bit less ergonomic for, for most of us, but a lot of fun as well. So, and then you can't beat the Model 13. Oh my gosh. Should I go ahead and fire it off? I think I ought to. Yeah, dude. Let's put six rounds in it. And uh, I know most of you saw it fired this week, but I haven't fired it for a while. I want to shoot it again. It's such a, I hate to get it dirty in a way, but huh, that's what they're for, right? They're for shooting. They are for shooting. Yeah. They're for shooting at short range and long range, right? Oh, sweet sound. How about a two liter? Oh, yeah. But, <laughs> yep, if you just had one firearm, you could do worse. As I think I said in that video, you know, joked about uh, how FBI agents, it's a miracle they're not all dead, you know, from the 80s because they were carrying his old uh, FUD gun revolver. Well, those of you who know firearms and have some common sense know that. Uh, uh, survival is largely dependent upon your mind, right? Being prepared, being ready, your mindset, you know, more so than what caliber you're carrying and what type of firearm even, right? So uh, that, that's a beauty. It's just nice. And I, I think I shot it okay in that video. Yeah, I've shot the Model 65, which is the same gun and stainless uh, enough and videos maybe i'll link to some of those the uh that one of the things i like to show as we started out with this uh stuff on youtube was that small guns can be accurate enough plenty accurate uh fixed sights can be sufficient and just as good as you know highly adjustable sights and all that kind of thing and it's just being able, to, most of it's us, the user, right? It's uh, the Indian, not the arrow kind of thing. It's, uh, you know, just getting uh, proficient with a firearm, being able to uh, to shoot it well, break the trigger when the sights are on the target, whether they're fixed sights or they are adjustable sights. Because again, once I get sights adjusted on a revolver, I don't change them, I mean, maybe ever. I tend to adjust them for whatever load I shoot the most, whatever common load is, and uh, that's it. <laughs> you know, I've got I've got Smith and Wessons or Colts. I probably adjusted them one time, you know, decades ago, you know, and or newer ones I've picked up in the last ten years or five years or whatever. Get them set, and that's it. And then I don't even think about the sights. You know? I am not going to be changing them for different loads. Uh, I'm not gonna do that. Because for every firearm, this might be a tip for some of you. Uh, I talked about it before, but get a load, uh, and by that I mean a, a bullet weight, power factor and all that, that you like, and then maybe kind of standard. Something you can find in a gun shop, you can find easily in bullets, if you're reloading, okay? I mean, really, I just for a practical reason. That's why I started out hand loading 230 grain bullets for 45 ACP, 240 grain bullets for 44s, you know, the, the standard stuff for 45 Colt, 250 grain bullets. Uh, I mean, you know, follow the leader. Yeah, I wasn't trying to do anything unusual or strange. 
I knew to, wasn't a hipster when I got into hand loading. I was, okay, what do most people load? What are the traditional loads and what weight bullets and all that kind of thing? And uh, figured out a load, a power factor or whatever. And yeah, that's what I shoot. Uh, if the gun has adjustable sights, I get the sights adjusted to where I like it. Uh, if I like it, maybe some people like a little bit more of a six o'clock hold on the bottom of the target. Some people like to hold right on where it's going to hit. And uh, if your sights are not adjustable too bad, you hold where <laughs> the gun <laughs> points. But yeah, yeah, once you get them set, they, they're there. I, I noticed that early on, uh, as dumb as I was in the early 70s. I right? got a gun, I guess it was that Model 19 I've talked about. I adjusted the sights, whatever I did with them, and and I didn't I, I didn't move them. I was shooting 158 grain bullets, loading for it, and, and it, it occurred to me then because I had seen revolvers with non-adjustable sights, and they're smoother like this, than have the big sights sticking up. And I uh, thought, yeah, well, you know, so I got those adjusted. I haven't moved them. You know, I haven't really taken advantage of the adjustable sights, have I? Am I doing something wrong? Probably. No, I really wasn't. Yeah, get them where you like them and believe them, you know. Uh, I may have mentioned this before, the, the people who seem to have the most trouble in the various competitions I have, com I have participated in were, uh, I don't know about the most people, there were always people, put it this way, there were always some guys, usually guys, that were, uh, I don't know, I don't know, they were, they were very average shooting, you know, in matches, very average, you know, middle of the pack, lower, whatever, in the scores. Uh, not to demean anybody, I mean, however you shoot, go do it. It's fun. If you want to compete, do it. Whether you finish last every time, if you like doing it, it's fun, and you uh, improve your skills and all that kind of thing. It's always competitive. But um, the people who could, most of the time, the very fellows who, who, didn't necessarily do so well in the matches were the ones always changing their bullets. They were always changing uh, their load. They were always talking about, I got a new load, a new powder, a different weight bullet, trying a different weight bullet, because they weren't, I don't know, scoring as high as they, they wanted to, and they thought, it's typical of those guys, we think we can buy our way into uh, the winner's circle or whatever it is. You know, you get a better gun, new gun, that'll solve the problem. And sometimes that helps. But, you know, changing your loads all the time and your bullet weights and all that, that's probably not, unless you're using something that was not very smart to begin with, you know, it's not necessarily going to help you. It's probably going to hurt you. Keep changing things around, you know. Uh, you first learn to shoot. You know, if I took up drag racing or uh, NASCAR tomorrow, and before I even get into it very far, just learning how to drive a car fast around a track, I start, yeah, I don't know, I think I'd do better if I had different tires, and hey, let me uh, deflate these tires a little bit, I think that'll help, and I start messing around, I'm just messing myself up, probably. I need to learn to drive first, to where I, you know, I'm competitive, <laughs> and then I'll start to notice things that seem to help, you know. Little learning is a dangerous thing, you hear that from me a lot, don't you? All right, because I am a dangerous thing, because I epitomize learning just a little about everything. So what else? Let me, can I shoot the AR again? Uh, I think I had some more ammo in that mag. All right, AR-15. Got the aim point H2 on it, micro H2. And uh, quite a rig for an AR-15. It's uh, hard to beat, right? Let's pop some pins. Let's do some bowling here. bowling pins out of the way. And that was the last round. You know how I know? I can just feel it. It was just so, so obvious. Now, I've mentioned this before. I haven't looked at it yet, but it's the last round. I can tell the bolts. I can tell the bolts fade back. And I've, I've talked about that yeah, before. Uh, a sign of someone who hasn't shot much uh, you see them shooting, they keep trying to shoot after the gun's locked back even, or the slide's locked back, or it's empty, you know, what's wrong, what's wrong, oh, I'm empty. And, uh, you know, if you, you all know, everybody that shoots very much has made that transition. And that, that comes early, you know, it, it's, even if you haven't shot much at all, you, know, you, you might perceive that, it's very, very, uh, 
obvious. It's just totally different feel after you pull the trigger if the bolt stays back. Now, if the bolt doesn't stay back, well, I got an AK. Uh, yeah, you don't get that feeling, so you may, <laughs> there's no... Uh, there's no real special feeling there. There's no uh, evidence or giveaway on one like that. Or I guess even if uh, your Glock doesn't lock back on the last round because your mag or, or your 1911 mag doesn't hold it back. Uh, other than it's not picking up a round on that last empty slide uh, lock up, uh, you might be able to perceive that probably. Not. But it's just so distinct when that, lock, that slide locks back. So you're in a gunfight, that could be helpful to know, right? You can tell it's empty without even knowing. Without counting your rounds, how's that? Oh, gotta have a drink of elitist uh, water here. If you don't get the joke, you're new, right, brand new? Uh, yeah, I was, yeah, that, that's just the way of the internet, you know. And if you're, you know, many of you create content somewhere on Facebook or here and different things, you, you have to just assume for the most part that, that people know what you're talking about and what you're doing. Is that thing crooked? I feel like I'm a little angled here. That's all right. I'm kind of off center anyway. I'm not very level. I'm not very level headed, am I? There we go. Let's adjust right in the middle of the video. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, I, I think I just lost track of what I was even talking about. Uh, but uh, it, it was something that didn't really matter, you know. Does anything matter that I'm talking about? <laughs> Usually I can get myself off track, onto a sidetrack, and then I, I kind of can loop back. I know where I was. But let's move on. I think what dumb thing I was about to say. Uh, yeah, I'll see you at the NRA meeting, I hope. And uh, I don't know if you heard the news that uh, uh, there's a lieutenant colonel, uh, Alan West, you know, he was a representative uh, in the, the military and everything. Uh, seems to be a very fine, upstanding fellow. Uh, most of you are familiar with him. I, you see him being interviewed quite often, you know, TV and uh, news shows for years. But uh, the word, he's, he's uh, going to challenge Wayne LaPierre uh, for his position. Is that the way it's supposed to go, I think? But uh, for the you know, the lead executive director, I think, of the NRA. I don't know, if I'm wrong, let me know. But uh, he is, uh, so anyway, I think there's gonna be a vote. And so anyway, uh, could be big doings at the, the meeting, because it is, a, most of us think of it, a lot of us think of it, well, it's two things. It is actually the NRA meeting. I think that's what they call it, it's a meeting. And, you know, for various meetings and uh, work things out and all that, make decisions. But it's a huge gun show, too. And most people that attend go to the exhibits. That's why they go. And a lot of people go for both, some of the meetings and the exhibits. And some people go to speak some of the meetings and different things to vote. But anyway, uh, who knows? Could be some changes. Uh, it would be, uh, I think it would be good, or yeah, obviously really healthy if there were some uh, significant changes in the NRA. Because you've got the brand. I brought this out. I knew I was going to bring this up. This has been hanging in my, my room for 30 years or more, I guess. This NRA uh, belt buckle. You know, it's one of those, you might have one or seen those, you know. And I was thinking, I, I took it off the wall weeks ago, and I thought, I'm going to take that to a Sunday shoot-around and talk about that sometime. And just now getting around to it, because uh, I knew I was going to mention this, but and it's coming up this week. But it, whenever I see this, I think, yeah, it's such a shame, the brand you know, my gosh, the National Rifle Association, the NRA, that uh, just everybody knows, the enemy, you know, are aware and still afraid, kind of, of the NRA, you know. And that's that's valuable stuff to some extent, you know, and a brand, once you establish a brand, um, you, boy, you, you hate to give it up. I mean, that's a valuable thing that, uh, that many, many thousands of companies or organizations never really achieve they never get a brand so recognizable you know on the planet as something like the nra the national rifle association you know and so it's a shame for that to go down the tubes uh so maybe maybe some uh, positive uh, changes can can take place we'll see i would sure like to see it and a lot of people would even even a lot of serious detractors uh i think would like to see that 
I mean, you're crazy if you don't. I mean, you're just another internet troll if you don't want to see the NRA uh, turn things around and become somewhat effective. They may not be uh, nearly as effective as, as you would like or I would like, but if they can get something done and become more effective, hey, that's that much more for the cause. We have a lot of different gun rights organizations now, and they're all doing something. And, you know, the more the merrier, the more uh, attorneys we get hired, uh, the more people in there lobbying and just, just everything, you know, putting pressure on politicians, you know, the better. You know, if some of those folks putting pressure on the politicians happen to have an NRA sticker, so be it, you know. Uh, but anyway, uh, uh, glad to see that, and I, I hope that there's some progress made with that, you know. Uh, you know, And I know it's easy. Uh, the NRA, of course, has been low-hanging fruit uh, for criticism for, what, a couple, three, four years now. And, uh, you know, we, we parted company with them, you know, over that. And, uh, you know, as a lifelong member and a life member, you know, I hated to do that. And, and, I, and I, uh, I'm still a life member, of course. I guess once you're a life member, you're a life member. I, I am not, like, so angry at them that I somehow you know, uh, eliminate that, cancel that, I guess you could, I don't know. <laughs> uh, I just uh, want them to do better, I want them to do better. And uh, so we had the whole, our whole episode w with them and, uh, you know, I, I don't really uh, regret any of that. Don't regret uh, taking support from them for a couple of years or I uh, don't regret certainly cutting them off, just, just the way it goes. Uh, Things were getting to a point where, uh, yeah, we just could not promote them, you know, couldn't promote them. Might not wanted to blow up the building, but uh, it, in our headquarters was like that, but just, just couldn't promote them, you know, at least. And then just like most of you and a lot of people, uh, hated to see it and not sure what all is going on and how much is true and how much is not and how mad we ought to be or not. Uh, you know, it's hard to know because you always have, and boy, I heard from all of them. I've heard from all of them on both sides of the continuum. You know, over here, you got the people that, I mean, they'll be diehard NRA supporters until they die and they can do no wrong and have never done any wrong. And man, they came after me when we parted companies with them in terms of sponsorship. Oh, there were some people that I kind of knew a little bit and uh, like like on, on social media that had channels or whatever and just uh, whew, were really after us for that. I mean, really badly. And, uh, and people who don't have YouTube or uh, social media uh, personalities, you know, there's people, a lot of people after us for, for that, you know, thought that was horrible that we parted ways with uh, their sponsorship. Uh, quit promoting them, you know, duh. And then on the other hand, you've got people on the other end of that continuum that, you know, for 10 or 20 years, you know, you've been seeing that, but then especially in the last four or five years, they uh, they just rant, 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 and rant, you know, against the NRA on every little thing, and like they're the cause of every gun law that ever came along, and uh, they, like, they dreamed them up. And, and so you got two ends of it. Some of the reality, the truth is probably somewhere in the middle um, but anyway, maybe we can get somebody in there that uh, people would trust and they could uh, maybe clean house wherever it needs cleaning, turn that organization into something that would be, uh, I don't know, honorable and represent the brand, you know, the NRA is something that uh, most of us could be proud of. And when I say most, that's kind of what I mean. You're always going to have people on the extreme ends of, of the continuum on anything, right? There are people who don't like you. I hate to break the news. There are people who think you can walk on water, right? Same with me or anybody else or the NRA. So th those two extremes are always going to be there. Uh, something for young people to keep in mind. That's going to happen. There's going to be people who be in your school, in your class or whatever. They're going to just be detractors and hate you for some reason. You won't even be able to figure it out well, what's going on with that. And the other people just like you a great deal. Well, most people are in the middle. So anyway, enough on the NRA, but I hope to see you there. Okay, say hi if you see me. And uh, it's a hectic 
time you know getting around here it's always a big crowd and uh, everybody's uh, looking at the stuff and the guns and playing with them but again don't hesitate to say hi all right you guys are the reason i get to stand in the woods shoot guns for a living all right so <laughs> i told you that many times speaking of that why don't i shoot some guns for a living actually i'd be shooting guns whether it's for a living or not right <laughs> Well, I, yeah, I, I don't necessarily shoot for a living. I shoot because I love it, and it uh, has turned into a living. <laughs> I've always been a shooter, and always will. All right. Hey, we haven't shot the paper yet. Well, let's just put one on there. We've handed. <laughs> nice. All right. How about a yellow or an orange two-liter double action? Okay, calm down now. All right, one more time. One-handed, double action. I knew I could do it. <laughs> Get to shooting too fast, messing around. You uh, got to slow down. I had a, saw a message. Somebody already wrote me. I don't know, they said they had... They had taken a break from shooting for some reason. I forgot what it was, oh, three, four years. And uh, they came back to it and they couldn't hit anything. Wouldn't know if I had any advice, you know, they, with a pistol, handgun. And, and uh, you know, they, they, they were really frustrated. I don't know, I, I think I told him this stuff. Well, you know, uh, just put the, I think he was shooting indoor range, bring the targets in closer. Take your time, just be really deliberate. And you see, I have to do that in videos quite often. I get to missing. Just make sure oh, that sight is right on there when you pull that trigger. You just get some confidence built up and and that you know the sights are on. Okay, like if I'm missing, you see, it happens a lot on Sundays, doesn't it? I'm missing the gong or something and I have to mess with it and then I figure out where to hold. And no, sights are good, it's me. Or maybe it does shoot a hair to the right or something. Uh, and you know, you just get a really nice break and you know, you're seeing that sight when the hammer falls, trigger breaks and you know you were right on and you do that several times and, and you're seeing the bullet hit right where you wanted to and all that. So I don't know, and then maybe you bring the target out a little further, but you still take your time and kind of like shooting a basketball. If you're having trouble hitting the basket, you know, I used to do that just out of common sense, not because I read it in a book. But you know, having trouble hitting, you just go in. Okay, I can do this. What's wrong with me? You know, get in there and get free throw, or not free throw, but a layup, a layup position, and just make sure I'm following through. What is wrong with me? You know, and you know, hit some, then maybe move out three, four feet. Do the same thing. Maybe some free throws. Just back to the basics. Take your time. Make sure your fundamentals are correct, and uh, you know that kind of thing. Uh, it, you know, the gun didn't change, you didn't really change, it's just you haven't done it for. I mean, odds are the fellow is doing like I was doing, he just thought he was doing okay, but you know, just pulling it just at this tad. With handgun, it takes nothing, okay? If you're new to shooting or you have not shot and you're sick enough to watch these videos, you don't even shoot. Uh, Look at that the, that barrel. I mean, if you uh, if, if that thing is moved at all, think about how much it changes the point of impact out there at 10 yards, 100 yards, dramatically, dramatically. You know, uh, so yeah, it's it's not easy. Shooting a handgun is, is kind of it's hard. You got to focus every time you you shoot. So anyway, uh, nice gun. So sad about the buffalo. Uh, incident shooting at the uh, grocery store uh, you know it, it's when those things happen uh, but there's always going to be a crazy person a loony bird around right in a free society you know you cannot guard against that kind of thing uh, totally just can't do it it's going to happen just be ready uh, everybody just needs to be ready and, and obviously the odds are about as likely as your plane falling out of the sky but i mean you still it's just something could happen you know that's why you put a seatbelt on you're taking off and on a flight and when you land i mean it could have trouble just doesn't happen much but uh 
Yeah, you know, unless you want a police state, you know, that's just, yeah, it's always a possibility. How do you guard against somebody just losing their marbles, you know, doing something like that, or somebody that filled with hate, you know? The, uh, again, I don't want a police state. I don't even want a. I don't want a police state where your your buddy and your your family, your neighbors are in your business either or my business. But but when somebody is like when someone is truly exhibiting, uh, uh, I guess threatening behavior, yeah, we do need to take notice, don't we? And it, you know. You know, let somebody else know, maybe in your family, don't uh, don't uh, overblow something that's not really worthy of uh, that. But you know, if somebody is writing a lot of stuff that's just hate-filled, like on social media, and the internet, you know, that's a pretty big step. You know, <laughs> I mean, if you're crazy enough to start revealing how crazy you are, put it that way. There's always going to be some people who are, who are secretly crazy. I mean, maybe, maybe secretly dangerous, you know? You, you're not going to find them out, right? But a lot of the people are truly are losing it or have lost it. They are doing these, uh, these diatribes and stuff, you know, online or somewhere. And there's people who know them in their chat rooms or whatever that, that, that ought to be alerted uh, to that, you know? And, uh, you know, get them help get them help which is help for the rest of us you know uh, all it takes is one person you know to wreck a lot of uh, havoc you know so but but that kind of thing unless you're in an absolute police state uh which i don't want to live in is 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 unpreventable totally unpreventable you know a lot of it is preventable baby, but you can't totally prevent that sort of thing as i've said many times i'll take the messiness of freedom you know yeah, I could be in that grocery or whatever and, and, and be gone tomorrow that still say the same thing. Uh, uh, it's uh, just a risk we take with a free life, a free life, okay? So, but anyway, we need to kind of watch each other. If you know anybody who, you know, they're really going off the deep end, you are kind of obligated to kind of let somebody know that family, you don't need to be running and calling the FBI you know, not all your neighbors, but, you know, I don't know, talk to their family uh, maybe first or uh, somebody at school, you know, if it's a school situation or, you know, is there, uh, friends of theirs, uh, you know, hey, is, is this Bill okay? Uh, seems like he's, uh, you know, like, he just seems a little odd lately or is he, is he okay? He's not losing touch with reality, is he? I mean, you know, just kind of check it out a little bit without being a, a, uh, Oh, uh, a uh, what do you call it? Uh, uh, well, busybody, overly being a busybody. So anyway, it, it's sad that uh, kind of thing can happen. Uh, it's uh, yeah, just just no easy answer to it. No easy answer. Uh, there is there is a lot of anger in the world, and of course you get uh, more and more. It gets it gets trumped up by. Uh, politicians and I say trumped up in the terms of the meaning of that word I'm not uh, uh, there's no double meaning there at all because it's coming from other politicians uh, dividing everybody right trying to get votes and uh, uh, racial divide the whole nine yards economic divide uh, social class this is it's just uh, pathetic the way a lot of politicians uh, do that and have been doing that and keep attempting to do that and building the anger. And of course, that's reflected on social media, how, how people get into their, whatever their bubble on social media and then they, they just feed off of that. I had, there was a, oh gosh, who was, who's Gutfeld, it was on Gutfeld, I think. It was talking about, this is weeks ago maybe, how the social media is kind of a mirror that feeds people what they're interested in. And what they linger on, they get more of. I think that's almost an exact quote of what you're saying. You, so you get a steady, a steady diet of whatever it is that you're looking for and that you linger on. You know? and, and of course, all of us can fall prey to that, right? But, but you know, if I'm half crazy and a little unbalanced at all, so I'm looking for like-minded people, like-minded people online 
can I find them? Yeah, buddy. You can find people online. There's probably clubs and groups, whether they're secret or not, uh, who, who are a part of any kind of crazy uh, way of thinking. Right? And so what happens is you're just feeding off each other and it just, uh, you become radicalized, really, whatever it is, whatever it is. If you're a positive person, you're looking for ways to help people. You're constantly looking for uh, good causes to donate to, charity causes or whatever it is. You're kind of involved in that. And so you get on the list and the emails and whatever, you know, I donated to the tsunami thing, you know, 10 or 20 years ago, whenever that occurred. And I, and so I, I was barraged with uh, emails and con contacts from that sort of thing. So whatever you, you, you look for, and I mean, you get more of it, really. You get more of it. Like I said, it's kind of a mirror. So, but anyway, if you're someone who's extremely, I'm not, but I'm you know, trying to pat myself on the back. I, I do get the charity, but I'm not, not as much as I should probably. But if, if you are someone who does that all the time and you're doing good work, maybe you're a missionary, whatever it is, well, the mirror you're looking into, you're seeing lots of people doing the same thing and, and talking to you about that and asking you questions about it and, and different agencies contacting you. And that's, that's your radicalization, your positive radicalization. You know, it's all about helping people and doing good deeds or whatever it is. But yes, yeah, so it works either way. So if you're kind of half-baked, your brain ain't totally right. Well, not that mine is, but if, if your brain is dangerously half-baked, put it that way, and you're looking for sites and people to communicate with that are kind of equally half-baked and dangerous, uh, you'll find them. And then you feed off each other and you get radicalized. Yes, that kind of stuff can happen. It, it could happen to somebody you would not expect it to, especially younger people. Um, so, you know, watch out for each other. I can say, watch out, yeah, this fellow in Buffalo was 18 years old, right? Wow. Yes, pathetic. But anyway, so sad. So sad. Uh, what else? Can I shoot something else? I don't know. What do you want me to shoot? The AR-15? I'm not sure I should. Uh, aren't these considered dangerous and evil? I consider them the teeth. You know, you know what I'm going to say. The teeth of... Yep, Second Amendment. Okay, so let's shoot something with it. All right. You think it'll blow the target over? It might. All right. Get my ears in tight. If you've never fired an AR-15 or been around one, guess what? They're loud. Bullseye. It's accurate. It's accurate. I love it. Oh, there's an orange two-liter that's not been addressed. Nice trigger. I wasn't ready. Nice trigger. <laughs> uh, I guess I'll put one on the turkey. know if it'll do damage to it or not. It is AR-500. Uh, there's a bowling pin hadn't been hit. <laughs> How about somebody while he's down like one of those two liters? Couldn't resist. Couldn't resist. All right, you know how I give you that lecture? Uh, you, when I have a revolver like today or a lever action or a muzzle loader about why haven't you tried one, get one, you should have a lever action uh, on your to-do list or you should own one, you're missing out on a lot of fun or a revolver or a muzzle loader. Like, the same thing again applies to an AR-15. There are some people who have not discovered the joys of an AR-15 or an AK. Uh, they are lots of fun, and uh, again, it's what our forefathers meant for us to have, the te technology of the day, basically. And uh, so many, it's the most popular uh, firearm period, I think, uh, today. 
uh, definitely the most popular uh, rifle, you know, sporting rifle, the modern sporting rifle, uh, MSR, you know, the most uh, popular rifle on the market. And there are so many of them out there. And the more, the better. And magazines and everything, uh, just to ensure they don't go away easily. Okay, so so uh, if you don't have one, uh, maybe you want it on your to-do list because uh, lots of advantages uh, to an AR-15. They are so pleasant to shoot. Low recoil, adjustable stock. You know, that was just great for me. For short people, average people, tall people, uh, you know, just uh, ammo is widely available. Variety of sights you can put on here, optics, metal sights, whatever you want to do with it. So obviously they're probably the most modular firearm out there. And uh, there's one that would fit you and that you would like and you would enjoy shooting it, okay? Uh, biggest downside is, guess what? It's loud. It is very loud. But then again, you need ear protection for anything you're shooting. If it's a 22, uh, well, this is a 22, <laughs> but it's a loud 22. It's a fast 22. Uh, so anyway, to give you a little bit of that speech. Uh, these are a lot of fun. They're still some fuds, unlike me. You know, I I'm proud of being a fud to some extent. But uh, there are some people who think that you know, these black rifles are really evil. No, I've ever owned one. But uh, that, that's just more for you and me, right? So, uh, anything else you want to hear about? Probably not. And, uh, oh, another quote of the week I heard, or a quote of the week I uh, caught last week or whenever it was, was uh, Will Kane uh, on Fox said that, uh, I, he may have been quoting somebody else. I should have looked it up. but. Uh, he said, never let ignorance get in the way of your certainty. And I thought that's so true. And I, who knows, I forget what they were discussing, but you know, there's a lot of that going around, right? A lot of ignorance, a lot of certain, well, a lot of ignorance expressed with certainty, you know? <laughs> and uh, you know, there's, there's lots of uh, famous, I guess, quotations about that sort of thing, how the, the people who are the most ignorant, uh, seem to be the most uh, sure of themselves. Have you ever noticed that? There's, there's a lot of truism there, isn't there? Uh, folks who know the least uh, seem to sometimes be the most confident, you know, in, in an area. You know, it also ties in my old buddy, Alexander Pope, you know, a little learning is a dangerous thing. You know, we build up that we're still ignorant on where the topic is or subject, but yet we feel certain you know about it yeah we should just feel certain that we don't know everything about it right i heard a doctor talking recently as a nutritional there's a doctor talking about nutrition or something but he was talking about medical school how when he went to medical school medical school he did, out of the first couple of years or so he he got to really thinking he's pretty smart i kind of I've learned so much about this pathology and you know, how to work on the body and what needs to be done. And he, he's a, he, he really did feel, he's not an arrogant sort of guy at all. He just, I just, you know, and I think his colleagues had similar experience. He just really began to feel confident and smart about, yeah, I, I got this, man. I, I, yeah, this is cool. I can go practice tomorrow or whatever. Then he said, as he got into uh, the third year and some of his other rotations and different things, he, he began to realize how ignorant he was. You know, he really he did. And he, and it's just such a truism, isn't it? Uh, you don't know how ignorant you are. I don't know how ignorant I am on any topic until I learn a certain, uh, until I get to a certain level of learning on that topic. I can think I know it, but I don't. And I don't even realize that until I get to a certain level. That's why that little learning is a dangerous thing, you know, because that's the point where once you, you learn about something and you get to a point, I don't know what the percentage would be. Let's say there's a, on a scale of one to 100% of knowledge on something. I don't know, maybe it's when you get to the 25% or something of the knowledge or 30%, you, you, just, you just feel so smart. You, you become dangerous because you think you know it all. Yeah. But then as you get up into that 60, 75% maybe of whatever the area is, whether it's how to change a tire or gunsmithing, whatever it might be, you get up into that area and you were like, boy, 
am I dumb? There is so much I don't know, and I better be careful, you know? Uh, and that's just something to keep in mind for all of us, isn't it? So, it's speaking of advice, how about young people? Let's give them some advice before I let you go. Uh, keep your guns clean. No. Uh, I'll tell you what I think is good advice for young people, all of us. We have this, where's mine? There it is. We have this godlike tool, small g, don't get upset with me. <laughs> this godlike tool, don't we? Uh, fits in our shirt pocket right there. The whole world is accessible right here. I can learn about almost literally anything at my fingertips, communicate with almost anybody, you know, within seconds. And the knowledge of the world, just right here, right here. And how are you using it? It's the same with your laptop, okay? But I, the phone's a good example. How are you using it? Um, we've got the knowledge of all time and a little pocket piece like that or your laptop and what are we doing with it one of the most absurd things to think about and keep in mind is with the world accessible right here the history of the world all the knowledge of the world is accessible to all of us but yet many of us spend the vast majority of our time doing what arguing with people on social media on this stupid thing or worrying about some post we made or that somebody else made or how many likes we got on a post or who has said something about us on a post or something you know i mean ah, that that's kind of tragic isn't it it's just something to keep in mind you've got this in your pocket you know how are you using it how are you using your artery to all the knowledge about basically everything and not just a bunch of boring articles that are yeah how do i read the you can enlarge it but the videos on it They're probably almost any type even even stuff that's pretty uh uh i don't know what you say uh intellectual that you normally wouldn't be that interested in reading about it would be hard to read about there's probably people in that arena in that area who do podcasts and discuss those things that are very, very difficult to read about maybe, or whatever it might be. And I mean, we just it's just amazing. You know, it's an education. I, I probably gotten more education from this little thing in the last couple of years uh, since I increased my data, <laughs> but uh, to unlimited uh, than anything. I just, the two things I have done that helped me a great deal was uh, just unlimited data and uh, I pay for the YouTube premium, okay? So that adds a little bit per month to, uh, to my expenses. But I mean to tell you, uh, literally everything is there. I'm bike riding, walking, whatever I'm doing, anything. I, I can just access the world and play it, you know? I can, I, there's even a video probably with this firearm there's probably some big ugly guy with a video or two on the Daniel, you know, Defense V7, and and I could tap into to him, and I could become brilliant just like he is. Don't you think? <laughs> He's pretty funny, huh? But I mean, literally on everything, and uh, and the the thing that's helped me, you know, I've discussed it some, like with nutrition and firearms or anything. It's helped me discover some alternative views on things that I wasn't even aware of, especially nutrition and how I was like on the wrong track. I sucked up all that BS back in the 70s and 80s about nutrition, the food pyramids and and uh, driven by the cereal companies and everything. And wow, I mean, I, I, I'm almost embarrassed, you know, uh, the preaching I have done in uh, my life and the eating I have done in my life, you know, thinking I was like the ultimate nutrition expert because I was eating whole wheat bread or oats or just whatever I was doing, you know. And, you know, I just learned <laughs> so much and I, I'm not gonna become a, you know, an evangelist. So just look at Dr. Benjamin Bickman, uh, Dr. Dan Barry, uh, who else? Uh, there, there's a lot of them I could, uh, gosh, what's the other a bit? 
that's a good start. L look them up, you know, and see what you think about it. I'm not going to be the uh, the advocate, but just so much at our fingertips. And uh, you know, you're you're interested maybe in getting an AR-15, for example. Well, Google. Well, go to your phone. You know. Uh, but you can't decide whether that or an AK or whatever. Google AR-15 versus AK, you know, and just and, and just probably a billion videos. Some of them are just entertaining or goofy or not very uh, educational, like the one we did years ago. We're going to do another one on that. But I mean, just whatever it is, uh, ballistics. Uh, what what? Uh, uh, how many grain? What's grain mean? You know, we got videos on that too. But what's uh, I don't know any question, but primers and uh, hard primers, soft primers, or, or uh, uh, see, what is it, uh, uh, what is it, with the bolt, the bolt face, uh, headspace, yes, yeah, what I was trying to say, like some firearms have a headspace problem, some of the military surplus firearms could have that, whatever, you know, headspace, you may have seen that in writing, well, look it up, what is headspace, you, I mean, the knowledge of the world is right there, so, so maybe get off of uh, the social media side of it occasionally, and use it as a the educational tool it it, it, it can be it really can uh, I think it's going to be a long time but schools really need to change they badly need to change you know the whole you know paradigm is is crazy when you think about it picking up everybody and hauling them by bus to these institutional buildings and lining them up in classrooms and and then talking to them and whatever we do and everything. Some schools are pretty good, but uh, I mean, and it's, I'm not the first one to think of this, but you know, we talked about this, uh, some of my colleagues and I years ago, uh, how, you know, really with technology, the, the computer assisted instruction that's been around for 20, 30 years now, some good stuff. Uh, you know, when I was in publishing, it was one of the things we had, we offered with the medical publisher I worked with, uh, computer assistant instruction. And uh, there, if somebody puts together a really great, for example, I don't know, factoring, you know, some, some aspect of geometry or algebra, uh, a lesson on factoring, and uh, they're just a great teacher. The best examples, very interesting to watch. It's a kind of video that even though you have no interest in that, you, you sort of get tied into it. This person is so good at it and explaining it and maybe why it's important, <laughs> if, it, if they can do that, uh, you know, for whatever, 40 minutes, or maybe there's four or five segments of it. and watch. Uh, You get the best person on the planet to do that, whoever that is. Say you're a math teacher. I'm a math teacher, and I happen to be the best at presenting that particular thing, but I'm not necessarily the best at presenting some other things. Well, you collect those, maybe the five best on the planet in each language. Well, why does someone have to be hauled to a classroom and listen to some boring teacher talk about factoring that doesn't even want to be there maybe and would rather talk about gender something or whatever your crazy stuff, yeah? Just, you know, we, well, we need to start using this tool uh, to its uh, better advantage, I think, you know, or even if they are hauled to a building somewhere, maybe that's what they're, they're looking at. I don't know. Sorry, teachers, I don't want you to lose your job, but uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I think there's a lot that we could be doing there. So how do I get off on that? I don't know. I probably need to shoot. Let's do that. Let's shoot some magnums. You want to? Uh, all right. Yes. Oh no, that's 38 special. I was about to put well, nothing wrong with that. 38 special. Not like putting the wrong ammo in, right? It's not like that. Uh, that's the beauty of a 357 revolver. Again, I always point that out. I know some of you probably get tired of me pointing out the same things over and over, but I don't know any new stuff, so I just had to point out the old stuff. <laughs> no, we have so many new new viewers and and uh, and then plus. You know, if you're not really very experienced, you know, repetition works. You know, I mean, you just need to be reminded maybe. Okay, I know I do. Speaking of factoring, I need a lot of reminding when I'm uh, studying the math. <laughs> okay, 158 grain, 357 Magnum, federal premium. All right. 
Let's see if one of these will go through that paper. Let's shoot the Ballastol logo. <laughs> wow, it is loud. We're right through it though. Talon grip. <laughs> nice. See if it'll hit that red plate hard. <laughs> yeah, buddy. Sure did. Mr. Cowboy has just been quietly hiding today. Oh, boy, what a flinch. I gotta put another round in and get him. Uh, he thought that you by you being quiet, I'd forget about him. I didn't, I didn't forget. Yeah, he, he even somehow uh, got me to shoot the firearm empty. We put three on him just for that. <laughs> yeah, take that, Mr. Cowboy. Yeah, I'm not going to neglect you. You're one of my favorite targets, my favorite desperados, right? So you can tell the difference probably even on the camera you can hear. There's just one thing about the way we do the sound, it, the, the gunfire and everything is more natural. Uh, you know, you know, the lapel mic has its advantages, but you get the sound, the realistic sound this way. It's like we like to do it. I was watching a video this week, in fact, and uh, I don't know what the video was about, some gun, maybe even a musket or something, but uh, I kept hearing these birds tweet and different things, and, I, and you know, the background sounds, and I thought, there's something weird about this video. It's, something, it's like I'm there. And it dawned on me, that's what it was. Uh, he didn't have uh, a lapel mic. And uh, it may have been an early, I think it was an early, uh, might have been an early uh, Forgotten Weapons video. I'm not sure. But it be an earlier one. Uh, but I don't know, some video like that. And I thought, yeah, okay, that's neat. Because a lot of you have made comments about that. The realistic sound of the gunfire and the, the birds and identifying birds all the time and that, that kind of thing which doesn't come through, you know, at all or as well with a, a, a lapel mic. So anyway, 357 Magnum comes through no matter what kind of mic you're using. <laughs> it's a loud one, it, just like this AR. You better have your ears in tight, right, when you're firing either one of them. Uh, good advice no matter what you're firing. Okay, so should I make you leave? Uh, make you leave. Uh, you know, here's one last topic. I'll, I'll, I'll offend some people. Okay, sorry. But, you know, I'm again, I'm a libertarian, and uh, everybody is welcome. Uh, hardly anybody is, well, let me say, nobody is not welcome, you know, unless you're a violent person or something like that. You have no control who watches your videos, of course. Uh, you know, there's this old thing about, you know, if somebody does something crazy, you know, oh, that guy was, he was a, whatever he's watching our videos or he's watching rack vet or he's watching whoever you could name or some of the or uh or or someone uh assaults a female and well yeah they they uh they he had he had been uh he had some x-rated movies or whatever well that, that stuff is so bizarre you know when you start using that kind of logic you know if somebody does something crazy they probably also were driving a ford you know, uh, yeah, they also shop at uh, Walmart. Yeah, yeah, there must be some connect. Yeah, so that's always kind of goofy stuff there. But uh, what I was going to, yeah, get at, oh, we, we, uh, we, I don't care what your gender is. I, I really don't. There's no bearing. You know, I, I, I don't get the, the bigotry, the bigoted way of thinking. I'm sure I'm not perfect. I've got blinders. I'm sure on some things too, but. I, I just don't get it and, and really never have since I was 20. Um, people who just downright hate other people that are different and that kind of thing. Uh, I really am happy for you to be however you are. Absolutely, whatever you do, you're not bothering me. You know, go, go for it. And I uh, don't care what your gender is or your religion or your what language you speak. I, it, it's just irrelevant, and especially with the Second Amendment. You're certainly welcome to help support the Second Amendment. Um, and uh, that way, teaching, you know, I wasn't trying to indoctrinate kids into 
politics and religion, that sort of thing. And anyway, there was, I saw a comment or someone wrote me, I don't know, they, but anyway, they, they said that, uh, you know, with your huge platform, I've never heard you mention Jesus. You could reach so many people, you know, and, uh, and I, I get that about different things. It could, I could reach so many people, you know, about whatever, the environment or whatever the cause might be, whatever the religion might be. And uh, yeah, yeah, I guess you could, but that's not what, that's not what we do. We're not about, we'll let the politicians, here's a, here's a news flash. We will just let the politicians do the dividing in this country. How's that? They do an excellent job of that, along with the loony media. We'll let them create the division and be divisive about things, okay? We don't do that. I you know, don't care what your belief system is. Uh, yeah, yeah, we reach a lot of people. I could, uh, you know, I could talk about anything and reach a lot of people about it, right? For a little while, <laughs> I could, what would be another example? Yeah, I could start talking religion every week or, uh, yeah, well, or just politics every week, or uh, about, uh, uh, I don't know, you name it, whatever the topic is, and guess what? Then I wouldn't have a big following. <laughs> you could just destroy whatever you following you have, and uh, you would have a very devoted following about whatever your political views are or your religious views, because all of those people who agree with you, yeah, they come around. All those people in that political party, yeah, they'd love you, you know. So anyway, uh, that's just, you know, common, common sense, common sense. And uh, you all know that. So, I mean, really everybody that is, is for, for uh, liberty and freedom supports that. The Constitution, uh, the United States, any folks on other continents, other countries, uh, you know, like, now you're not as excited about our Constitution, maybe, or maybe you would be, you'd like to live, I don't know. Maybe you can make some progress where you live, uh, get more freedom going, more liberty, I don't know. But uh, we have a lot of followers around the planet. But uh, in, in this country, yeah, you're definitely uh, all very welcome. And uh, nobody is excluded. The only people I don't have a use for again are just people that are, are just hateful that, that that hate you know and uh are bordering on being violent you know those are the people that we don't have use for uh most of us right uh but yeah do your own thing uh the uh and that's the thing about social media and i'll, I'll let y'all go but uh, uh no matter who's running twitter or facebook or anything else there does have to be some control right it's just we want it to be minimal you, you can't have people coming on Twitter and advocating like violence and that kind of thing or or uh, harm to children or yeah you know, I mean use your common sense there there's probably there's never going to be a social media or a platform where just anything goes maybe on the dark web or somewhere <laughs> but that's that's not going to happen you know uh, if you did if you did venture into where you almost let anything go think about it if you're one of the major platforms or any of them uh, you're not going to have anybody wanting to advertise on that platform. So how's, how's it going to run? How's, how's it going to run? So you couldn't do it anyway. Same reason YouTube, uh, we get mad at YouTube about uh, like demonetizing stuff and they overdo it and you got the gun bias or whatever maybe, I don't know. But uh, it, it is for advertising you know, as a thing. They don't want to offend advertisers or else they're not making any money and the people who post videos aren't making any money and all that sort of thing. So you can argue about it and, and, and get mad at YouTube or Facebook or whoever it is, but you know, the, the systems don't work you know, unless, unless there's some common sense, I guess, you know, about it. You know? So uh, and for those who don't know, uh, YouTube kind of Google got got more restrictive and started clamping down. What was it five or six years ago? Some ads. I don't know who it was. Coca-Cola or some Wendy or some major company. Their ads got uh, put on some videos that were. I don't remember what it was. Extremely 
objectionable. Okay, I don't. It wasn't just somebody talking about firearms. It was something extremely objectionable. I don't remember what it was, and uh, so that kind of kicked that off, I think, and uh, that was the way that went. And so, yeah, you know, I, I can argue both sides of that to an extent. If I uh, if I owned the president of Chevrolet, General Motors, or uh, Wendy's Corporation, whatever it is, you know, and 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 ads for my company, my big juicy burgers that I want to sell were on some, uh, you know, horribly violent video or some crazy thing, you know, I, you know, I guess I'd have a problem with that too. I don't know. I don't know what you think, you know, uh, but let people just judge for themselves. I don't know. Anyway, I'm rambling for sure now, so I got to get out of here. And uh, again, I hope to see you uh, at the NRA meeting. Okay. If you live uh, somewhere close enough to, to go to that, uh, again, you don't have to be a, a NRA lover. It's uh, it's the biggest uh, gun show you know in the country. You get to pick up all the firearms. It's virtually every firearm that each company makes is still in production. Maybe some that are out. I don't know. And they have taken the firing pins out of them. And uh, and you literally can pick them up, fondle them, pull the triggers, work the actions, and all that. It's just kind of a, a unique thing, you know. And uh, and it's a huge hall full of all of them there. So that's one of the, the big attractions. And uh, so uh, probably uh, see some of you there. And by the time I talk to you uh, next week, a week after, I'll have to uh, do next uh, Sunday uh, video early as well. Uh, if I'm going to have a Sunday video that that Sunday, I guess uh, before I go. So, uh, so if I do see you there, I won't be able to uh, say anything about it for sure, you know, with uh, specificity, right? <laughs> but anyway, I uh, hope to see you there at the SDI booth or at the the uh, Sounds for Central, you know, booth. Uh, so either Friday or Saturday, or just milling around, uh, you know, around Houston. Okay, uh, we're staying uh, downtown, uh, somewhere there. I forget the name of the hotel, hotel, and uh, got a pretty good little walk. But don't have to mess with the car if I don't want to. That's always my goal. And uh, you get parked and leave it, and uh, just hike around, hike back and forth to see all the toys and meet people. So, might see you there. I might not. But I should see you here next Sunday, okay? Glad you came out again. And uh, be sure again, check for ticks when you get back to the house. Life is good.